Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today marks the kickoff of the FCJ80 Land Cruiser build. In the last video when I introduced this truck to the channel, I mentioned that there's a lot of things I have to fix before I can get started on the fun stuff. And one of those things is fixing all of the leaks. So today we're going to be replacing the valve cover gasket on this 1FZ FE motor in this 1993 Toyota Land Cruiser. Let me take you over to the whiteboard and show you what other things we need to do to this truck before we can get started on the go fast crawl, not really go fast, but the go fun mods. All right, so obviously I want this truck to run well and be reliable before I start taking it off road and on these long trips. So here's all the things I need to do before we get to that point. So as I mentioned earlier, I need to fix all the leaks and that includes the valve cover, the spark plug tube seals, and I'm gonna replace the bolts on there as well. And also the oil pump and the front seal are leaking a lot. Those both need to be fixed. And I did see a power steering leak on the low pressure line. That's pretty easy to fix as well. Um, some other things I'm going to do is just replace the fusible link and the cover. The reason for this, the, the fusible link on it is perfectly fine. I just want a spare, so I'm going to put a new one on there and keep the old one as a spare. I want to replace all the coolant bypass hoses, all the radiator hoses, basically all the coolant hoses on the entire motor. These things are known for something called a pesky heater hose and it ends up bursting and you're kind of screwed. So I'm just going to replace all of the coolant hoses on the entire motor. And then I want to remove this antique alarm system that just is constantly going off. It never stops going off. That, that needs to go. It has a little tiny microchip that you have to insert under the steering column. And until that's inserted, uh, the, it, it doesn't disable it. And honestly, when you insert it, it only disables it half the time. So that's got to go as well. And then after that, just do a full maintenance on the entire truck. Then we can get started on the fun mods. This valve cover was extremely dirty prior to this video. I pressure washed the entire engine base so you can't really tell now, but believe me when I tell you, this entire motor, front to back, top to bottom, was absolutely coated in oil. I wouldn't be surprised if this has been leaking for like 10 years. So to get this thing off, we're gonna have to remove the throttle body, including the cables and the coolant bypass hoses that go to it. We're gonna have to take off the PCV hoses here, the intake tube, the spark plug uh, wire covers and the spark plug wires. And we're gonna have to probably loosen up that heater valve back there as well. And then we should be able to get this valve cover off and replace the gasket and the actual seals that go inside of each uh, spark plug tube. I've been wanting one of these 80 series Land Cruisers for quite some time, and if you watched the last video, you'd know that I sold my first gen 4Runner with the 3RZ swap to switch over to this platform. I'm super excited to build this rig, but as you're about to see, there's more to fix than just a couple of leaking gaskets. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the heater valve. I'm having a little bit of an issue getting one of these throttle cables off. I'm thinking I'll be able to get to it once I take the entire throttle body housing itself off. I should probably be able to get to that one then. But in the meantime, I'm gonna work on taking off the heater valve and loosening up this whole wire loom right here just to get it free and kind of out of the way. Moving on to the wire covers now. Just two 10 millimeter bolts and these will come right off. It's pretty easy so far if I'm being honest. Hopefully it continues to be this way throughout the entire project. As I drop a bolt, I'm gonna get a magnet because I'm gonna touch this and drop it. Funny how that works. You say one good thing about the project and then it tries to screw you over. Since I'm taking out all these spark plug wires at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and mark them one, two, three, four, five, six, just to make sure that I get them all back into the right spot.
All right, so now that I have everything out of the way, spark plug wires, little covers, everything else that was in the way, the intake tube, all that stuff, now I can move on to the throttle body. So one of the things I was having issues with earlier was getting this cable off right here, and I actually figured out how to get it off. It's just really easy. On the side of the throttle body, there's those cams, so it's the actual things you put the cable into that open up the valve inside the throttle body. Um, this one goes in between the main uh, pedal cable and the cruise control cable. So this is probably a, a kick down cable or a return cable or something like that. So if you're doing this on your Land Cruiser, just know that in between the cams for the actual throttle cable and the cruise control, there's a middle one and you're just gonna twist it up like this and slide the cable out. So for taking this thing off, there's a couple sensors. There's a TPS, this is probably an IAC or something like that. Both of these, I'm gonna take them off. And then uh, there's a couple of vacuum lines I've noticed. So, man, I'm definitely gonna have to take off this one. This probably goes to the EVAP or something. And this vacuum line here, and then the two that go to, I'm gonna guess that's some control valve for the EGR. And there should be some coolant bypass hoses under here, which I do have new ones to replace them with. Um, but I don't think we'll be able to get to those until we actually start removing the throttle body. So yeah, I'm just gonna start taking this thing apart. This is one of those coolant bypass hoses I was talking about that I'm gonna replace. One of them is right here. I don't know how much this is gonna leak. It shouldn't leak that much since it's so high up on the motor, but I guess we'll see. I didn't drain the coolant. There should be another one of these once we take the throttle body off. I'm taking off the throttle body now since I got that coolant hose off and there's gonna be four 12 millimeter bolts that hold this thing on. And then I should be able to get to the rest of those bypass hoses that are under here. And once the, the throttle body's off, we can take this valve cover off. These bottom bolts are in a really hard spot to get to, so what I'm doing right now is I'm reinstalling a top bolt to hold this thing in place. And I'm using a magnet on the bottom bolts so that they don't fall down into the abyss of the engine compartment. And then I'll take that top bolt off. I'm gonna have to put a new gasket on here, and if you're doing the same thing, you're gonna have to use a new gasket too. And there it is, we've got the throttle body off. So there's two bypass hoses attached to it. One goes on this side and that's accessible before, it's actually right here, it's accessible before the throttle body actually comes off and the other one goes right here and snakes down under the intake manifold and goes to some place that's highly undesirable for someone that has to change it like myself. So. That'll be fun, but let's tackle the valve cover since we're finally here. There are 13 valve cover bolts and I'm going to work from the inside and hit the corners and then just kind of evenly loosen this thing so we don't crack it or anything. I know there's a low chance, but it could happen or we could warp it. So I'm just gonna take it off uh, kind of more deliberately instead of just kind of reckless. Some of these are actually already loose too, like that one in the back where it's leaking quite a bit was already loose. Here's one of the bolts and I think it's pretty safe to say that it's leaking from that back right corner, as well as this whole right side and the left side, basically everywhere, but definitely as you can see, it's, it's leaking. So did you guys see what I saw when I took that valve cover off? Do you see it now? <laughs> Can you imagine my misery when I saw this, that the timing chain guide is broken and that the other half of it is down there? Right there. Let's pull that thing out of there.
So yeah, this is not good. Um, what do I do? What do I do now? <laughs> oh, I came in here expecting to do a valve cover, and now I have to do a full timing chain install. Ugh. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push this guide back down to where it's. Oh god, it cracked some more. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to reinstall the valve cover with the new gasket. I was going to clean the valve cover and everything, but now I'm not gonna do that since I'm gonna have to take it back off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put everything back together because th th this is not a shop. I have to get it out of the garage. You see this thing's halfway in the garage, halfway out of the garage, it can't just stay here. Um, and we have cars that have to come into the garage at night. So what I'm gonna do is put it back together with the new gasket and the new spark plug tube seals. I might replace the bypass hoses while I'm here, but I'm gonna have to tear it back down anyway, so I'm just gonna do this when I do the oil pump and the front um, main seal down there in the future. But yeah, this is completely unexpected. I can't believe it's been running and driving with no issues like this for so long. As you can see, this old gasket is rock hard and definitely the cause, see that? Oh, maybe you didn't, I wasn't really watching the camera, but definitely the cause of some leaks. Comment below if you've ever seen a gasket this dry or a seal this hard. They've all came out this exact same way, so what I've been doing is I've been hammering the lip down like this. And I've basically been using it as a lip for my seal puller to get them out like that. But yeah, all six spark plug tube gaskets and the valve cover gasket itself completely bone dry to the point where you touch them and they snap. Unfortunately, so is the timing chain guide. So more, more issues to fix down the road. So I know I said I wasn't gonna clean the valve cover, but I'm cleaning the valve cover. So in the meantime, I'm going to take off these little half moon grommets and get these re-siliconed. Man, those are really in there. So I also marked the, well, it came off. I, actually, the marking didn't matter. The reason I marked it, I had a yellow mark here, was so that I knew what side went outside and what side went inside. It's actually the uh, aluminum on this broke when I took it off. So I'm gonna have to replace these too. Man, everything on here is so crusty and old. I might not even take this side off. I might just have to get new moons. And since it all has to come back apart anyway, maybe I will just do it then. Well, as things continue to go wrong, the list continues to grow. Now I know that I need a new evap line for the throttle body because it's kind of crusty, a new timing kit. Might as well replace the chain too, right? If the, if the guides are bad, I might as well replace the chain and I need new valve cover half moons. Also, when I took that half moon off, you probably noticed that a piece of aluminum went flying. I was over here scrambling, looking through the cylinder head to see if it fell in there, which if it did, we would have even a worse day than it is going already. But when I watched the video in slow motion, I found it right there, thankfully. So what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna remove that so it doesn't fall into that cylinder head. And then I'm going to install the spark plug seals in the valve cover and put the valve cover back on with the new gasket. I know that it's sketchy reinstalling it with this broken guide, but it's been running that way and I didn't even know it. And I wouldn't have been worried about it if I you know, didn't know about it. I'm only worried about it now because I saw it, understandably. So as I said, I need to move this truck and I need to prepare all the parts to replace the timing chain guides and the chain and the, and the oil pump seal and all that stuff. So I don't want it to be sitting here in the meantime. So I, unfortunately I have to start it and move it. Normally I would use a seal driver for this, but my kit doesn't have the exact size that would be used to drive these seals. So I'm using this socket right here instead. And it seems to be doing the trick just fine.
All right, valve cover's back on. I picked up a bunch of new bolts as well, so we won't have to use that nasty old hardware. These valve cover bolts don't go that tight. I like to hold the ratchet at the head of the ratchet here so I can't put too much torque. And basically, once the bolt is snug like this, I just give it a little bit of a turn to tighten that thing up. I don't need anything more to go wrong today. Snap an ear off the valve cover or strip a, a bolt hole or something like that. So just barely tightening these guys on. The valve cover is reinstalled and normally I would replace the throttle body gasket as well as the coolant bypass hoses. But as I've said before, this does have to come back apart. So I verify with a couple of members on the forum board, I hate mud, that in order to replace the timing chain and the slipper, which is the guide on the left side and the guide over here, you have to take off the at a bare minimum, both oil pans, which requires quite a lot of work on these 80 series. As you can see, this bracket that's right here, let me see if I can show you. That bracket is welded to the frame and it directly blocks the oil pan from coming out. So normally what you have to do is use a hoist to kind of jack the engine up about two to three inches to get that off. However, they made a fair point on the forums. If I'm going that far, I should probably replace the head gasket as these early 80 series had issues with those as well as the timing chain guides. So I'm not gonna take too much effort replacing the gaskets and the bypass hoses when I'm gonna have this all apart anyway, unfortunately. But I guess uh, the positive in that whole negative thing is that I will have a bulletproof engine once again, once this is all put back together. So with that said, I'm gonna reinstall the old throttle body gasket as I don't want to ruin my new one when I'm gonna have to replace it. And I need to add to the list now, head gaskets. Ugh, a lot of work is coming my way. Plus studs, plus whatever kit I can find to replace that head gasket, man. You guys hear how quiet this engine runs, like how perfectly smooth it is? Huh. This is why it breaks my heart that I'm gonna have to tear this thing down to fix that timing chain, guys. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. I can't lie to you, I'm pretty bummed out that I have to tear down this entire motor. I just went in here to change a valve cover gasket and fix some leaks, and it turns out I basically have an engine rebuild on my hands. I don't have to take it out of the frame or anything, but there is a lot of work. You have to take off both of the oil pans, and that involves an engine hoist, lifting the engine up. I have to take off everything I just did in this video, plus the cylinder head, and then I can finally get to the timing chain. So this is, we're looking at like 30-ish hours of work to get this done, so not a small undertaking. But on the bright side, at least I can make some videos for you guys and hopefully help you out if you're 
you're having to do something similar to your own Land Cruiser, or maybe you just like watching me suffer. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Here we go, at the top of the glass on the road, and it's time to run it up, yeah you know, maxed out, put the pedal to the floor, hey.